pertubertinib is a bit different than our existing available BTK inhibitors. Those are all covalent inhibitors, a calibrutinib, xanabrutinib, and abrutinib. And so for them to have their activity, they need a wild type C481 residue. The most common mechanism of resistance to these covalent inhibitors is acquisition of mutations at C481, which renders the drugs unable to form their covalent bond and patients subsequently develop progression. Pertubrutinib falls in the class of non-covalent or reversible uh, BTK inhibitors, and it requires a different binding site distinct from the C481 residue, and so it subsequently can have activity regardless of the presence or absence of this mutation, and so the drug can be used following progression on um, these uh, covalent uh, drugs. And so it's um, been widely uh, tested now in CLL in the phase one, two Bruin trial um, that enrolled CLL in addition to a number of other B cell malignancies. Um, it's been reported um, for a little over 252 CLL patients, the safety and efficacy, and the drug has a re overall response rate in the 60 some percent range, but almost all patients have some degree of lymph node uh, reduction with a really impressive waterfall plot. But the drug is also just very safe, and so it has very low rates of discontinuation of only around 1%. Almost no atrial fibrillation was seen with the drug, and among the times it was seen, often it was in patients who had pre-existing atrial fibrillation. And so it's um, a drug I'm looking forward to. It's further development. Um, it is now uh, the subject of a number of phase three trials, um, both in the frontline and relapse refractory setting in CLL, um, and it's also being uh, further developed in a mantle cell lymphoma.